Hi, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and this is... Luke Smith, and we're going to be continuing our Mice and Make Six playthrough. We sure are. But first, just a couple things I wanted to mention. We had a good question from one of our viewers asking, why do we put the fit cards face down that are in the pack? Aren't we all working together? Why is there hidden information? Well, it's not really hidden information. The idea is there is to show that these items aren't equipped to the mice. But it made me think, because there's these little gaps between our videos, I'm gonna forget maybe sometimes what the items are. So I think we will keep them face up, but to show that they're in the pack, will turn the cards on their side. And maybe that's something you want to do for your games too. One other thing that was pointed out is that we are giving the players a bit of an advantage by rolling the movement dice for both Meganos and Colin at the end of each video because now Meganos knows exactly where Colin could potentially move on his turn. Now, we believe that that's an important thing to do because although that is a slight advantage, it's a real disadvantage for you guys to be trying to decide what to do with Colin if you don't know how much movement he has. So hopefully that balances things out. The other thing I wanted to mention, the last thing I wanted to mention, our, our initiative track, we had a question about that. The question we had was when the rat warriors move up on the initiative track after taking their action, yeah. does that mean that the mouse that's now immediately below them gets to go again? So Colin was in the second space, he got moved down to the third space below the rat, so does he get another turn? The way to think about this is to think about the initiative track as slots of action. So we had Meganos in slot one act, then Colin in slot two act, and then the and rat, rat warriors in slot three acted. So after the rat warriors act, we now move on to slot four. And slot four is of course Nez, not back up to slot two and then move down to slot three. Hopefully that makes sense. Hey Dad. Yes. Why is the this thing in Bob turning around? Whatever <laughs> this, it is. This thing in my popper, also known as the story control board, has been turned around so that when we're shooting the video, it'll be a little easier for me to show mm -hmm. the viewers yeah. at home where we're on the story control board. And what's this? Oh, this is uh, some cheesy snacks that mm. Balsa 13, one of our viewers, thought we should have while we play the game. But actually, I think I just want to eat these all up. So when we finish this, we'll come back and we'll continue our playthrough. Alright, that cheese was pretty good. Yeah, and yeah, pretty yummy. Mm. <laughs> and now we're ready to begin. So our playmaker move comes to us from Greg Risers, and he wants Meganos to get right into the action. He's going to fight the rat warrior that's on the tile with him. And so we'll bring you guys down to the table and we'll see how that attack goes. So Meganos' attack is 1, which comes from his battle value, and then he gets a plus 1 for a ranged attack. Now a little rule I'd like to tell you about, if you have more than one target for a ranged attack, but one of them is adjacent or on the same space as you, then you must target that minion that is adjacent or on the same space as you first. And so Luke will be rolling the attack for Meganos, but remember, potential hits will be bows and arrows since this is a ranged attack. Go ahead, Luke. Oh, we've got one, one potential hit. hit. All right, so now I'm going to be rolling the defense for the Rat Warriors. So we don't want to see any shields, because one shield would block that attack. No shields. Yes. However, we do have cheese. a cheese. So we're going to have to add a cheese to the minion cheese wheel on the story control board. And because we defeated the last Rat Warrior on the tile... We have to remove the Rat Warrior card. That's correct. So this is gone, and now the rest of the mice are going to move up one space each to fill in that gap. And so yes, the last Rat Warrior can be removed from the tile. Thank you very much, Luke. And now Greg wants to move Meganos two spaces over onto the same space as Nez, getting onto that grate. Now it's time for us to see what the rest of you guys voted for what we should do with Colin. So the submission that got the most votes came from Joseph Cummings. Very smart decision for Rodney to roll for the Rat Warriors. Should be an easy win as long as he's rolling for the rats. That's not a move at all, that's just a commentary on my poor rolling skills. 
<laughs> that got the most votes. Okay, so what got the second most votes, which was actually a player move, was from Dark Soldier 91, who says, if Meganos does not kill the Rat Warrior, then kill him with Colin. If Meganos does kill the Rat Warrior, then search the room for equipment. So Colin is going to do a search. So let's again get the okay. camera down here. We'll do a roll and see if he searches successfully. And so I guess you guys want Luke to roll? <laughs> okay, Luke, go ahead. We're looking for a star. Yes! And there it is. You know, Luke, eventually that rolling streak is going to come to an end. But not yet. <laughs> but no, not yet. Ooh, this is not good. This is a poison cheese. It's a treachery card, and it says you have to play it immediately, and then this mouse receives one poison wound. Poison wounds are those green wounds, and they're bad because you can't heal them like you can a normal wound. You have to find special anecdotes or spells that yeah. will, will heal them. There is one good thing, though, kind of. Tilda has an ability that if someone gets poisoned on her tile, she gets to collect a cheese token, so we will give that to Tilda. All right, so now Colin's turn is over, and it's time for us to move on to Nez. So Luke, that's going to be you. Let's yeah. get the camera to the table and find out what Luke wants to do next. So I want Nez to collect the Tinker's treasure from Magnus. And you can do that because you're on the same space. That's a share action. And this is the Tinker's treasure here, and the great thing about it is it takes place right away. It doesn't yeah. take up an action. And this allows Luke to look through the search deck and take any one weapon or armor that he wants. Now, he's already gone ahead and looked through the search deck. And what did you pick out? The Thimble Helm. The Thimble Helm. It now, gives me one defense. Yes. And whenever I draw search cards. Yeah, that are what? Treacheries. I just draw a different card instead. You can ignore it. So we won't have that whole poison cheese thing happen yeah. again. <laughs> Only for Nez. Only for Nez. That's right. And then the Tinkerish Treasure gets shuffled back into the search deck. And now it's Tilda's turn. And for Tilda, I want to roll to see how much movement I get. That's going to add one to my movement of two for Tilda. And she's going to move over to the grating. And she's going to do an explore action. And that means we're going to finally fall through this grating and go to a new tile. All right, let's move this out of the way. Let's move all of our mice off of the tile. And we'll flip it over. And then splash, they fall through the grating and land in the water on the space that has the flip tile action. You notice this one actually has the fish hook and thread symbol on it. That means in order for us to flip this tile again and get back up through the grating, we would have to first have the fish hook and thread. You'll also notice that this tile has a proper exit here, and that's what we're going to need to go through to get to the next tile. All right, so now that we've fallen through the grating, we have a little bit of work to do over at the story control board. So the first time you enter a tile, you have an encounter. That means we have to flip over the top card of the encounter deck. Now a couple of things happen here. First of all, it says mouse traps. And if there were any mouse trap spaces on the tile, that means we'd have to place some mouse trap tokens out. But there aren't any, so that's nice. Next, we look at what page we're on. And we're on page one on the story control board. And that means we're going to be facing two rats and three roaches. So what we need to do is get out the initiative cards for the roaches and the rats, shuffle them in with all of our mice, and then we need to place them out in a new random starting initiative order. So the first one we have, oh no, oh, the, the rat warriors are going to act first. And the roaches are going to act <sighs> next. This, I should let you shuffle. Maybe you're a yeah. lucky shuffler too. Then it's going to be Colin. Then it's going to be Meganos. Then it's going to be Tilda. And then it's going to be Nez. Nez. All right, let's go back to the tile. So before we place these minions, there are a few special rules for this tile that I want to tell you about. First of all, there's a special search. Anytime you search in any of these water spaces, you will automatically find the fish hook and thread. The fish hook and thread is a party item, and that means when a hero mouse collects it, instead of it going to his personal inventory, it's shared by the group. So if any mouse wants to use it, for a free action, they can place the fish hook and thread token on the board. One end always must be on the space where that mouse is. The other end must be clearly within another space on the tile. And at least one of those ends has to be a non-water space. But then once placed, a mouse can move from either end of the fish hook and thread spaces as if they were adjacent spaces. So this mouse could move from here to here as if it was adjacent. 
Now, because it was going from water to dry land, it's still going to use up all of its movement. However, it will not have to roll a die and get a star like you normally have to do when you're trying to leave water. And don't forget, a mouse that's on one of the ends of the fish hook and thread can use an action to collect it and put it back in the party stash for use later. And lastly, before a mouse uses an explore action to exit this tile, probably from this space here, all of the mice first have to be on the same side of the water as the mouse that's trying to explore and exit. Now it's time to place those minions. Now with melee minions, you spread them out as much as possible. So I'm gonna put one rat warrior here, one rat warrior here, and then one roach here, and one roach here, and we have one extra roach left over. So let's go ahead and put it right here. And let's talk about those roaches for a moment. When they attack you, they have a battle value of two, but a defense of one. One hit will kill them, and their special ability is to steal. When a roach wounds a mouse, instead of placing a wound marker, it instead removes cheese from that mouse's stash. If that mouse doesn't have any cheese, then instead it places a wound as normal. So up first we have the rat warriors. I'm gonna roll to move this one here. And it is a three. So one, two, it can't move on to the same space because this one's already full. So it will stop there and then it will be able to attack. And of course it gets two dice to attack. Now if there are multiple targets, the minion will target the closest mouse. And if there are several that are closest, then if more than one has not been attacked, or if all of them have been attacked, it will target the highest mouse on the initiative track. So this attack is going to go against Colin, and he rolled one cheese and one sword. Speaking of cheese, Dad, yes? Colin gets the cheese because he's not the first one on the singing bobber. <laughs> yes, that's right. Because Colin is not in the first position on the initiative track, we should have given him a cheese token, which we will do now. And because I rolled a cheese for that rat warrior, we're going to be adding another cheese token to the minion cheese wheel. So now let's get Luke to roll that defense. You're gonna to need to roll at least one shield. <laughs> and Whoa! of course, you rolled two. So that's perfect, it blocked that attack from the rat warrior, well done. Now let's see about that other rat warrior. Oh, he only <laughs> rolled a one. So he's gonna move one space closer, that's the end of his movement. Now it's time for the roaches to act. So I'll, uh, I'll start with this far away roach right here. And it moved two spaces. Two. So the closest would be to go one, two. Now remember, minions are not affected by tile effects like water. So it can move across water without any penalties, unlike our hero mice. So now the roach will attack Meganos because he is next on the initiative track. All right, I'm gonna roll two dice. One possible hit. Luke, you know what to do? Roll that die. Ah, yeah. yes, that's what we needed because if we hadn't rolled that shield, Meganos has no cheese to give the roach and instead he would have gotten a wound. Okay, so now it's time for one of these other roaches to move. I'll roll a die and it's a one space movement. That's gonna put it right here, which means it's not adjacent to any of our mice so it won't be able to attack. And that leaves one more roach, which we'll roll for. And it's moving two. two. Okay, so that is gonna put it adjacent. And this roach now has to attack Tilda. Let's see what I get. Oh, another Ooh, cheese, cheese and one potential hit. Luke, I need you to be lucky, Luke, right now. You only get one die to roll. <sighs> we need a shield. Oh, no shield. No. So this means the roach steals one cheese from Tilda, which is probably better than a wound. Okay, so we're gonna end the video here. We're surrounded by enemies. Ah. We've got some wounds. The minion cheese wheel is filling up. Luke, we're in trouble. Definitely. But we have you guys to help us out, and the first thing that's gonna act is gonna be Colin. So again, that's all of our viewers. Decide what you think Colin should do. If you like what someone suggested, give them a thumbs up. We'll go with whatever gets the most votes. We'll be going out to our playmakers to help us decide what Megano should do, and then Luke and I will step in and wrap things up with Tilda and Nez on the next video. Anyway, I hope that was clear. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the YouTube comments below. I'll answer them as soon as possible. Until the next video though, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.